Hey, thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Nice to speak to you. Editors and the Netherlands has always been a great combination, but what is the first thing you do when you arrive in the Netherlands? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, well, it depends what I'm here for. I think um, when we, I mean, when we get into like, I don't know, go for a nice stroll. To be honest, your, your towns are good for walking around. I've already been for a walk around today to get a nice coffee. Uh, there's always nice kind of canals and water stretches to walk along. So that's that's normally something that will happen quite early on in the day. There was this year a big festival summer again for editors. Uh, you you did a few shows in the Netherlands, but I saw you guys on the Electric Castle, uh, Castle Festival in Romania. For me, that was okay. something completely different. But how was it for you to play a gig there in that country? Yeah, I mean, obviously we don't play there often. And um, that was really memorable. That was a great show. That was a good night. And... Uh, Um, yeah, it was a blast. That festival was pretty cool, wasn't it? Everyone was having a good time. And um, it was nice to play late at night. It went dark. I think I remember it's a big stage as well, so it was a lot of fun. Got to be, you know, be, you know, have a bit of a laugh. So it was, yeah, it was good. It was a good one. A good one to be at. What, what is the biggest difference between a backstage in Romania or in the Netherlands or in the UK? Are there any big differences? <laughs> um, that, well, I mean that was pretty that was pretty comparable to most ones. You know, we I mean we're lucky when we come to the to Netherlands, we get treated well. So, yeah. um, you know, there's nice you know uh, coffee and food and chocolates and things around, so it's comfortable. In the UK, <laughs> you, might, you might be lucky to get a, a, a four pack of cider and uh, <laughs> and a Twix. <laughs> That 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 that's enough for a rock and roll show, right? Yeah, <laughs> Just a Twix what, and some cider. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need. I saw you there on that festival. I got a first glimpse of this new album. There's a new editor's album. It's called EBM. I love this new vibe in this album because it's it's massive. I hear a lot of different sounds. And, and that's the thing about editors. Every time you guys release a new album, it's a total different vibe or sound. And I think that is why editors still exist. Because a lot of bands which started around you guys are are gone they are not there anymore but editors are still going yeah i mean we you know we 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 do try to shake things up and do things a bit differently with each record i think specifically with this one obviously we have a new member it feels quite um and he's got quite a strong musical kind of personality and it's yeah. coming through and blending blending with what we've done really really well and it kind of It definitely has given us an, an injection of, the, of uh, adrenaline, the shot of life, I think. It's given the whole thing, it's quite immediate and it feels quite up-tempo and I think it's quite lively, you know, so I think people are responding to that. In 2019, the Blank Mess sessions came up. That was the first time we could hear this collaboration between you guys and Blank Mess. Was that already yeah. the point you thought, okay, we need to make an album together? Well, we got on very well to start with. You know, that record was kind of like an offshoot of violence and, you know, the work that we did was, Bended was mainly production, but we stayed in touch and we became friends. And yeah, and then it, when Ben and I started to write together, and he was writing, not just producing, things really took a step forward. And um, I felt in his in his kind of some of his melodic choices and his chord progressions, I felt something that I found reflected in myself very early on. So I was unsurprised when we started to write songs together that we found a way of writing songs that just seemed to make sense, you know. And it's you know we were both kind of vibing off of what we were doing together so it just felt like editors you know so um yeah it's been it's been it's been really cool having been on board and now we're touring with him with him on stage with us too so it's all uh yeah it's all go it's all going it's all going on and it's it's so cool to see these songs come to life in in the set list with the older editor song it works so good i hope so you know for you me it's um, good yeah Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, we, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we we just kind of do our thing and, and throw it throw it all up there. But um, we're playing a lot of new songs. Um, you know, we've always had kind of a um, uh, an electronic edge to what we do. Some records have been more electronic than others, and obviously we're on our roots. We're kind of an indie guitar band, and those things have kind of merged over the years into different kind of balances. But now it all kind of feels. Like, all works together. Like, even in the set, we're playing things like All Sparks from the way old days, and then we play something like Strange Intimacy from the new record, which is like a, a goth techno kind of banger. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think if you're a band and you kind of exist and you, and you for long enough, things just start, to, the story starts to make sense over time, even if it's some points along the journey, maybe a bit confusing for people. Do you ever get reactions from the fans who only love the, 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 the indie rock editors? Because nowadays I play the new Arctic Monkey song on the radio, which is totally different yeah. from the first albums. And I always get the yeah. same reaction. I want the old Arctic Monkeys. Do you guys get the uh, same messages? 
<laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I mean, it, it, it is literally an impossible task to please everybody. You know, if we were making records that sounded like um, our first record, people would, there would be a lot of people that would shout for more electronic stuff. You know, if we play more guitars, people want the guitars to be more like Chris did it or more like Justin does it. It's like you, you, you can't second guess um, and pander to your audience in that way. You have to make music for yourselves, but also respect the fact that there are certain chapters of your band that some of your fans like more than others, and that's cool. You know, but I've always wanted to be on a, in a band that goes on a journey. Do you know what I mean? And take and takes uh, takes goes yeah different directions in what they do. So um, it is an impossible task to make everybody just go yes. Do you know what I mean? It's impossible. But someone always wants that. You know, no one likes change. It's, like, it's a human human thing, isn't it? I think that's the that's the main message I got from the Moon Age Daydream documentary about David Bowie. Mm -hmm. he, he said, I've not seen that, but if, yeah. if if an artist will fulfill uh, other people's wishes, they make the worst music. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to, you want your bands to be inspired and and excited about what they're doing. And for us, it's in it's in keeping things fresh and moving things forward. is is kind of it's kind of how we do it. Do you know what I mean? So that's how we keep ourselves, you know, inspired. This album EBM is now in the world. We can play all the songs, but we can play now a stripped back session from this album. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, which, which song are you playing? What are you playing? How many songs are you going to play? I got Karma Climb, Heart Attack, Kiss, Vibe. Well, you got it all, man. Nice, yeah. cool. That's good. But how was it for you to strip back these songs? Did it work for you? Yeah, it takes a little bit of thought. But like I said, when I, you know, a lot of these songs started with Ben's kind of you know, creative, they were his, his, his compositions, you know, structurally and cordially. And I kind of, um, like I said, I, I felt something in, in the way he does things reflected in, in the way I write songs. So when it came to me kind of stripping them back and sitting there with an the acoustic guitar, it just worked. It made sense, you know, you know, and if, um, so yeah, you know, I think, you know, it's a cliche, but I think it's how you can, you can tell a, a decent song if you can play it really bare and it still kind of stands on its own two feet. So I, hopefully these, these, these do the same. That's the thing. Let's play that session now on the radio. And can we maybe expect something next year about the weight of your love? Because next year, 10 years anniversary. You know what? I, time flies, isn't it? Time flies. I haven't given that any thought whatsoever. But amazing. Uh, I, I tell you, on the, on the tour this um, on this tour at the moment, I'm playing in the middle of the set. I play an acoustic version of the song "Nothing" from that record. And when I play that song, it just takes me back to Nashville and that time and uh, a lot of very good memories. But no, 10 years. Wow, that's that's nuts. Let's 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 talk about that next year. But first, this tour is coming <laughs> yeah. up <laughs> tonight. You play yeah, well, one thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight you play Rotterdam. Tom, enjoy that show and hope to see you next time here in the studio, maybe. Great, yeah, I'd love to. Thank you, Val. Thank you, guys.